All right, YouTube, I've had several people ask me to make a Brexit video. That is the UK, of course, holding a vote to see whether they want to stay in the EU, whether they want to leave. My encouragement is to the probably many hundreds of subscribers I have from the UK, vote to leave. Uh, the EU is dying for numerous reasons. It's obvious the border situation, it's going to get worse. Um, the UK would probably be stronger on its own, honestly able to negotiate its own deals. It's beneficial not just for the UK, it's beneficial to the United States. Now, maybe not to the globalists, maybe not to the people that are sort of uh, the elite neocon leaders of the Western world. It might play havoc with their plans. As far as the average American, though, especially with the very real possibility that our next president is not going to be really a neocon, he's more almost a paleocon in some ways. Trump, I believe, will be the next president. I think things would line up well for a much better relationship between the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, it would be much more beneficial to both sides than having to deal with the sort of crap that comes out of the EU. Over here on this side of the pond, we look at the European Union. We're like, how do these people even fucking deal with this? I, I don't understand it. I don't understand why the Germans haven't forced Merkel out of office. Because if somebody were as incompetent as Merkel or something over here, they would be forced out of office. Uh, it's happened before. We've had uh, people within politics who are really that disliked. And even and if they're not forced out of office, they become a lame duck. Nobody will even talk to them. Uh, you saw that happen to George W. Bush. Uh, another thing uh, people are saying uh, involving the Brexit. Obama's over there right now, of course, meeting with David Cameron saying, Oh, well, Britain should remain in the EU. Why? Well, who the fuck cares what Obama has to say about? See, he's not a British politician. He's a U.S. politician. Obama has repeatedly abused the people of the U.K. Uh, with data sharing uh, involving just mass surveillance. Now, I know that there is a bit of an Orwellian police state in the U.K. Uh, you know, they have the knife surrender pins. You can't really get a firearm. Uh, if you're too politically incorrect, you get, I guess, thrown in the gulag or something. And the funny thing is, the U.K. is not even by far the worst of these nations. You go someplace like Sweden, it's far more prevalent. Uh, yeah, I would encourage anyone who watches my channel, of course you should vote leave. Of course you should. You know, it may not be a fair vote. There's probably going to be some rigging going on, so you'll need a few e extra points uh, on top of the yes vote, I guess, for leaving to make sure that they don't screw with it too much and uh, uh, block the vote. <clears throat> but I know Nigel Farage and many other people are on the forefront of arguing, yes, we should leave the EU. Yes, you should. You will have a stronger country if you do. Another thing it would force your government to do is to rely upon its own productivity, live within its means. Um, you wouldn't have to constantly fund this central authority. That really, it's just another added layer of bureaucracy. We've seen one of the reasons the revolution was fought from the beginning was over the concept of these taxes levied by European states. High tax, low productivity, especially for the lower and middle classes. They would pay them pennies to keep them from starving so they could keep working, and that's basically all the social welfare that existed. Now, the UK is likely to be further right, which by my standards would be a centrist government. Scotland would probably leave the UK, but again, uh, England, Wales, and North Ireland uh, together would still be stronger uh, not being part of the EU. I think uh, the European Union was good on paper in the beginning uh, when it was more limited. It has grown larger as governments tend to do because it is a a post-national governing authority. That's really what it has devolved into. The problem is it's the same problem with socialism. You start a socialist program and you throw a few bucks into it and redistribute or, or prop up some program. And people say, oh, well, this, this is pretty good. This is a nice thing that we're doing. It feels good. It doesn't cost that much. We should fund it a little bit more, though. And successively, over the years, it gets funded more and more until it becomes a gigantic pestilential abomination. This is how socialism works. Socialism itself isn't the problem. It's the growth of socialism over time. It's an innate force. Uh, it's an evolutionary force, only it's a regressive one. It doesn't work, or it doesn't work well for very long. In countries where capitalism lately has been abandoned in favor of more socialism, it's still working. It is fast becoming clear that it will not always do so, however. Uh, 
it, it simply is impossible. It's untenable. It's unable to be maintained. Uh, the original program keeps growing. Bureaucracy goes hand in hand with this. The bureaucrats required to administrate such programs, uh, they vote themselves essentially through lobbying the government. More people, more money, more funding, uh, more expansive powers. We have this problem in the United States. We have a group like the NSA that is gobbling up more and more power, uh, violating the Constitution more and more. It costs a lot of money, and ultimately it doesn't do anything for us. And the NSA is on the forefront of abusing many European nations as well through data sharing. Uh, it's a complete violation of the citizens' trust. It's a complete violation of, of the U.S. Constitution and of numerous protections in Europe. It shouldn't be happening. It's expensive. Uh, the U.K. might be able to pull out of such an arrangement if it leaves the EU. In the EU, it's like you're screwed, basically. So, yeah, voting leave is the smart, sensible thing to do. I also thought it was funny. The mayor of London came out and said that Obama was a part Kenyan and so naturally... Uh, he, he fucking hated the British because he has that lingering anti-imperialistic sentiment going on or something like that. I agree. Uh, I don't think it's because of his part Kenyan background. I think it's because of his ideology being what it is. The, the ideology of the post-imperialist era is basically just the same as nationalism and imperialism, but it's a globalized version thereof. Instead of different nations in competition driving progress uh, and sometimes coming to blows with each other let's face it you have one you know giant homogenized blob of globalist authority that has basically agreed you know we're just we're we're all going to abuse our populations but we won't abuse each other that's basically all it is is the only difference from it uh, it's just as abusive in fact more abusive it's more bureaucratic and strangling uh, there's nowhere even to go to escape from it unless you intend to go to an insular state which is even more tyrannical, a place like North Korea or Turkmenistan or something. Um, so it doesn't really work. So, yeah, I think Obama does resent the UK, and I think he wants to see the people of the UK continue to get abused. That's why he's encouraging them not to leave the EU. Because it's in, Ob it's, it's in Obama's best interest as a corrupt, neoconservative individual. Uh, to want globalization to proceed uh, and become more and more strangulating over time. The end goal of globalism is to find that happy balance at which they can abuse people at the maximum possible rate without them calling for the heads of their leaders. That's really what it's about. It's a more sensible version of tyranny that doesn't go all out literally with martial law and goose stepping down the street because then you face a revolution or a civil war or something. The more sensible tyrannical alternative is to siphon money in quiet ways that get you know disclosed to the public less easily. Uh, you wrap it all up in secrecy, in a lot of confidentiality. You put a great deal of of effort into hiding what you're doing uh, while ma while making people think. For instance, Obama's a Democrat. A lot of people with D's after their names think that this means that he supports the social welfare. It, he doesn't. I mean, he's still giving out breadcrumbs in comparison to what's being stolen from the American people who would otherwise enjoy far more wealth under an actual free market. But he's an abusive, corrupt, warmongering piece of crap. That's what Obama is. That's what David Cameron is. That's what many of these other people are. I find it funny that the conservative party, supposedly a conservative party in the UK, is like, yeah, we want to stay in the EU. Why, for more, bu more bureaucracy, more taxes, fees, and regulations? That doesn't sound like a conservative platform to me. That sounds like a liberal platform to me. It sounds like a neoliberal, and the liberal party over there is like a Marxist party or something. Then you've got parties that are even far, uh, further to the right. Uh, I mean, further to the left. I mean, it makes no sense. The labels and terms that are being used uh, have lost all meaning. I'm writing a tract right now on the uh, excesses of social Marxism and multiculturalism and things of that nature, which I will announce on this channel, by the way, uh, that goes into some detail about this. All, all of these terms that people use, liberal, conservative, traditionalist, evangelical all these they've lost all meaning they don't mean anything anymore they've been so transformed from their original meanings that it's a totally different concept the conservative party in the UK is not a conservative party the labor movement appears not to care about the working class their their idea of of liberal Democrats aren't really liberal they're just basically Marxism light their Green Party appears not to be a Green Party even like UKIP UKIP's not a far-right party what they're arguing for 
is we want self-determination and border control. That's not a far-right platform. A hundred years ago, that would have been considered, well, duh, nobody would be arguing against that. A bunch of socialists wouldn't argue against that back then. There were socialist movements in the U.S. a hundred years ago that were far larger than the socialist movements of today. They never said, oh, well, we should abolish all borders and bring in lots of cheap labor. No, they were essentially a bunch of unionists. Uh, they didn't want that sort of thing. They wanted to be more insular in many ways. Um, yeah, the Brexit is a good thing. The UK should leave. It, it will destroy the EU if the UK chooses to leave. The people fundamentally of England, because the Scots aren't going to vote heavily in favor, or, or the Welch, I imagine, it's essentially, the future of Europe is now currently up to the English people, the people of England. That's where my ancestry comes from. That's the only reason I really care. Uh, the, the people of England right now have a chance to cut the head off the snake, so to speak. Fuck the EU royally. Uh, remove one of the largest economies and one of the largest militaries from it and destroy the EU. Reconfigure Europe in a way that's actually fair, that actually makes sense, you can have a currency union all you want. The problem is the bureaucratic strangulation currently going on is allowing any Johnny-come-lately idiot like Angela Merkel or any of these others to try to dictate policy to these other states. It will eventually cave in on its own. The difference is if the UK chooses to leave, it can speed up the process and you won't have a bunch of bad blood reminiscent of the interwar period, by which I mean between the Great War and the Second World War, like you did the last time around when the Europeans tried to come together under a diplomatic banner. They tried to get along. Ultimately, they failed because they alienated some of the European states that were there. There could have been peace. The Second World War never needed to happen in the first place. It never would have happened if conditions weren't ripe for the takeover by a bunch of totalitarians. That is what you risk if you do not leave the EU. Cut the head off the snake, cripple the EU, destroy its productivity, force it to dissolve, or, or go back to being basically Germany and its you know, anal buddies that it fucks up the ass constantly, like you know, the Netherlands, or maybe Denmark, or the Czech Republic or something, or, or Austria, which is basically just, you know, Germans point south, you know, the Tyrolean Germans or whatever. Uh, reduce it back to that. Reconfigure your arrangements. The, the, before the EU even existed here, there was already peace in Western Europe. The Western Europeans weren't constantly at each other's throats after the Second World War. They were trying to get along. They were far more worried about Soviet expansionism. And it, it seemed to work fairly well. They got along. They suddenly, they weren't bombing each other. How is it that the British and the French managed to accomplish this without being part of the European Union? I don't know. I, I guess nobody wants to explain how that happened. And they were prosperous. They were industrialized. My goodness, how did this happen? They weren't part of a currency union at the time. Um, and yet it happened. That's, that's the way that the world economy works. The U.S. isn't part of a currency union with Mexico. We don't have one central bureaucratic authority attempting to administrate and arbitrate between the United States and Mexico. And yet we're not bombing each other. And yet we're both advancing. Our economies are growing sluggishly right now, partially because of Obama's shortcomings. Not that Bush would do any better. I'm not trying to sound like a fucking Republican partisan, uh, let's face it. But slowly, but, but they are growing. Uh, things are very slowly getting better from the last recession. Very, very slowly, but they are. Um, even if they were stagnant, you'd say, well, there's some degree of stability here. And yet we're, it's like uh, China and North Korea. They're not part of some grand union. Uh, North Korea is basically just China's butt buddy that it happens to have a lot of coal so they keep from getting nuked by Beijing. And yet these two states continue to exist, and so far they haven't begun lobbing atomic weapons at each other. And one of those states is run by a lunatic. Uh, I would like to think that the UK and indeed all of the other European nations are capable of sense and civility and do not need to be part of a bureaucratic union. It's not necessary for their continued survival. The Russians are no longer particularly a threat to Europe. The Europeans are already under the protection of the United States if push comes to shove anyway. Uh, now you're talking about Turkey entering the EU. That's going to piss off a lot of people. Now, 
yeah, if you're going to have such a union, you would want to expand it naturally over time, but why have the union to begin with? It doesn't work. It just drains a lot of money. It's got a lot of bureaucrats, a lot of haranguing. This is European politics at its finest. You look at a, a session of the House of Commons and you can see why things proceed so poorly in European politics. It should be a far more streamlined, far more limited. Unfortunately, it's not. That's one of the major problems with Europe and has been for centuries. Uh, but the UK, yes, it should vote to leave the EU. The EU is going to die anyway. You don't want to be part of it when it does. The same would hold true Poland and all of these other nations, and I believe the Visegrad group, uh, they're sort of having their borders abused by people. Yeah, uh, don't be part of Merkel's Europe. Merkel's Europe is obviously not working. It's a, it's a post-liberal dystopian sort of Europe in which people are basically nothing more than slaves. Over here on the other side of the pond, we react with mild amusement. When world leaders around the world say that they're worried about our political choices, we say, your own political choices make so little sense that whatever you say to us doesn't really matter. You have obviously dropped the ball, you've lost some of your marbles. Now the English, essentially speaking, of the UK at large, has a chance to come to its senses, remove itself from this stupidity, and allow Merkel's Europe to collapse in on itself. It will be messy, but it will be messier the longer that it lasts. The, the more years that the EU stays afloat uh, beyond just Germany and its own sphere, the messier it will be. Um, you know, why should the UK want to keep feeding Germany, feeding the coals of German industry to its own detriment? It just doesn't make sense. A few decades ago, you know, 70 years ago, these countries were bombing one another. Now all of a sudden, they're so selfless that they're willing to compromise their own culture, their own borders, their own economy, their own industry to feed Merkel more money. Uh, it's very strange. I mean, it would be like over here in the U.S. with our, our we, what we've got as states. If one state were consistently and utterly abusing one of its neighbors, the other state wouldn't pretend to be happy about it, call people racists, sexists, and bigots for calling it what it is, which is abuse. Uh, it wouldn't be doing that. It just you know, people would lose their minds with anger if such a thing were happening. We've had situations where states have come to blows over such things. They don't magically start firing shots across their borders. They work it out in a more civil manner. Uh, but it should be where it's not a situation where anybody who says, no, I'm not comfortable, the EU really isn't working, that doesn't make them far right. That doesn't make them a bigot. Some of them probably don't care about these other peripheral issues like the borders or, or even the economy necessarily. But they care about their own sovereignty. They see the EU isn't working. Yeah, you should vote leave. Uh, any of my subscribers who are able to vote there, that's what you should vote. Uh, the UK's own policies will be better. Uh, without Merkel's influence, uh, without the influence of Brussels. Uh, that's just the way it is, uh, honestly. That's about all. Peace out.